Hey guys, today we're going to do another lesson on sound. I hope you liked uh, my daughter's band. They're pretty cool, aren't they? The MTSU Band of Blue and their nickname there on the MTSU campus is the Big Loud and Funky because they like to dance with their music. Uh, Brooke loves being in the band. What you noticed it was the was the pitch high or low? Sometimes the instruments were high and some of them times they were low like the big tubas in the back or sousaphones. What about the volume? It started off really soft and then they got really loud. And when did it seem like the sound had the most energy? When everybody was playing together and it was super loud and the drums were banging, it had the most energy. Amplitude. The amplitude of the sound was bigger when everybody was playing together. It had more energy. Amplitude's the amount of energy in the sound. Well, today's lesson is very similar to yesterday's lesson. We're just going to look at the digital version where uh, you listen to the, the computer talk to you and explain some things, the same things we went over yesterday. You won't have an assignment after this. Just pay close attention to the video and review what we've already learned yesterday. All right, so here we go. My big brother is part of a band. Oops, let me start over. Have you ever dreamed about being in a band? My big brother is part of a band. He plays the lead guitar. Sometimes my brother takes me with him to band practice. His band has some awesome sounds. Click the hotspots to learn more. Then click the next arrow when you're ready to explore more about sound. My brother is teaching me how to play the guitar. You can make a sound by strumming the guitar strings. Strumming vibrates the strings, which causes sound to be made. You can change the sound by pressing down on the string, which makes it shorter. By pressing the strings in different places, you make all the awesome sounds of a guitar. My brother's band just got new sound equipment. The microphone captures the singer's sound waves and makes them louder. Although mom thinks they are loud enough without the microphone and speakers. My friend Drew is learning to play the drums. He strikes the drums and cymbals with the drumsticks. This makes the instruments vibrate. Different shapes of drums make different sounds. I love the low sound of the bass drum. Welcome to the lesson, what is sound? In this lesson, you'll learn about the properties of sound. You'll also find out how sound travels. The vocabulary words for this lesson are wave, volume, wavelength, pitch, amplitude, frequency, and sound wave. Click each word to find out more about it. Have you ever seen the inside of a piano? A piano is a very complex instrument with keys, strings, hammers, and dampers. Pianos can make a wide range of sounds, from very low notes to very high notes. When a musician hits a piano key, a hammer strikes a string in the piano, causing the string to vibrate. This vibration produces a sound. If a musician hits a piano key hard, the hammer hits the string harder, which creates a louder sound. If a musician hits a piano key softly, the note has a softer volume. In this lesson, you will learn that sound is a vibration that travels in waves. Have you ever wondered how sound moves from the object creating the sound to your ear? Sound travels in waves and can move through a solid, liquid, or gas. Sound waves are a little different from other types of waves you might know about. Click the highlighted parts of the image to learn more about how sound travels in waves. An ocean wave is different from a sound wave. Ocean waves have crests and troughs as they travel through the ocean, transferring energy as they move. A sound wave is different from other types of waves. Sound is caused by vibrations. A sound wave forms as molecules in a solid, liquid, or gas are compressed and expanded by the vibrating object. For example, a vibrating guitar string pushes the molecules in the air closer together and then lets them expand. The wave that forms is sound. Light also travels as waves through space and our atmosphere. 
but light does not need to travel through a medium to transfer energy. Light waves are transverse waves, meaning they move up and down, much like ocean waves do. Sound has various properties that determine what you hear. As the properties of a sound wave change, you hear changes in volume and pitch. Click the images to learn more about volume and pitch. Have you ever asked someone to turn up the volume on the radio or TV? What does it mean when you ask that? If you said volume means how loud or soft the sound is, you are correct. Volume is measured in decibels. Louder sounds register as having higher decibel levels than softer sounds. Have you ever noticed how some instruments make very high-pitched sounds and other instruments make low-pitched sounds? Pitch is the characteristic of sound that describes how high or low a sound is. This instrument is a piccolo. The piccolo is a short wind instrument that makes a high-pitched sound. Compare the pitch of a trumpet to the pitch of a piccolo. Does the trumpet have a higher or lower pitch? If you said the trumpet has a lower pitch, you would be correct. The trumpet is larger than a piccolo and produces a lower pitch. This instrument is a tuba. Tubas produce a very low pitch. Do you notice how big the tuba is compared to the piccolo and the trumpet? This is because there is a connection between the pitch of these instruments and the length of the tube the air vibrates in. The tuba, which has a longer tube, has a much lower pitch than the piccolo or the trumpet. You have learned the difference between objects that produce a sound with a low pitch and objects that produce a sound with a high pitch. Look at these photographs and classify the objects according to the pitch of the sound they produce. Drag the images to the correct location. Okay, so this instrument is called a bassoon. It's very long and it produces a very low pitch. An ambulance, heard an ambulance go by, woo, woo, that's a high pitch. A bulldozer of some kind moving dirt, it's gonna be roaring, a low pitch. A lion roars too, doesn't he? He's got a low pitch. Here's a bird. Birds are high pitched. A flute is high pitched. A mouse. Uh, he's little. I think he's going to make a high pitch probably. And there's a cello that makes kind of a low pitch. Great job. You were able to sort all the objects by pitch. Objects with a high pitch have a high sound and objects with a low pitch have a low sound. A quiet sound can have a high pitch, and a low pitch can have a high volume. Volume, or the loudness or softness of a sound, is measured in units called decibels, dB. Sounds, such as a normal conversation, a phone ringing, a truck driving, and the sounds of a construction site, all have different decibel ranges. Some activities are louder than others. Click the dots on the line to learn more about the decibel scale. The lower the decibel number, the quieter the sound. 0 to 60 decibels is quiet to moderate. 10 decibels is the sound of someone breathing. 20 decibels is the sound of people whispering. The more decibels, the louder the sound. Talking with family at your home may be about 50 to 60 decibels. Talking in a crowded restaurant with background music may be 60 to 70 decibels. A 70 decibel sound can become annoying. A vacuum cleaner typically operates at 70 decibels. At 85 decibels, the volume of a freight train or garbage disposal, some hearing damage could occur. Volumes between 90 decibels and 120 decibels become dangerous to human hearing. A busy urban street or a food blender is typically about 90 decibels. Listening to a volume of 90 decibels for 8 hours causes hearing damage. Between 100 and 110 decibels, the volume of a jackhammer or a chainsaw, significant hearing damage can happen after lengthy exposure. 
You should wear ear protection around such loud sounds. Volume becomes very dangerous to human hearing at 120 decibels or the volume of a live rock concert. At that volume, sound can become painful. At 150 decibels, or the sound of a jet taking off from 25 meters away, eardrums can rupture. It is extremely important for people to wear ear protection in these situations to avoid permanent ear damage. All waves have two parts called the crest and the trough. The crest and the trough allow us to identify three measurable properties of waves, the amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. Click the areas on the waves to learn more about each part of a wave. The crest is the highest point on a transverse wave. The crest corresponds to the area of compression on a longitudinal or sound wave. The trough is the lowest point on a transverse wave. The trough corresponds to the area of rarefaction on a longitudinal or sound wave. Light waves and ocean waves are examples of transverse waves. Transverse waves have obvious peaks and valleys. Amplitude is a property of both longitudinal and transverse waves, but it is easier to show amplitude on a transverse wave. The amplitude of a transverse wave is measured from the baseline to the crest. On a longitudinal wave, the amplitude measures how compressed the particles are in the wave. The greater the amplitude of a wave, the more energy the wave carries. Frequency is the measure of how many waves or compressions pass by a point every second. Waves with a long wavelength have a lower frequency. Higher frequency waves carry more energy than lower frequency waves. So yesterday we didn't talk about this longitudinal wave very much. The waves we looked at were all transverse waves. But this longitudinal waves, remember we were talking about the slinky, it compresses and then it goes and then it compresses it, <clears throat> excuse me, compresses again and then bounces back. And so this, these longitudinal waves, just think long going across like this, they're showing the areas of compression is what these are. So this would, the areas where it's compressed, as the video said, would represent a trough on the transverse wave. Okay, so trough and then it would go down trough and then it would go down trough like that so it's just a different way of looking at waves sound waves are longitudinal waves longitudinal waves have areas of compression where the particles are pushed together and areas of rarefaction where the particles move apart see how the areas of compression in a longitudinal wave correspond to the high points on the transverse wave Similarly, the areas of rarefaction on the longitudinal wave line up with the low points on the transverse wave. Yeah, so you're not going to need to know the words compress and rarefaction. Compression, maybe not rarefaction. I don't even, that's just where the, there's not many particles together. Remember, wavelength, was your, whether you're measuring on the longitudinal waves, where there's the compression to compression, or the transverse wave from a crest to a crest, it shows the distance between them. Wavelength is the length of one wave. On a transverse wave, the wavelength is measured from crest to crest or trough to trough. On a sound wave, the wavelength is measured from compression to compression. These are all items that make sound. Match the decibel level to the correct image. All right, so we've got the softest would be 20 decibels. I think that's going to be a little girl whispering there. The next loudest, 70 decibels, probably the vacuum cleaner, I think it said was 70. A jackhammer, I don't think it's going to be as loud as a jet taking off, so I'm going to choose 100 for the jackhammer and 140 decibels for the jet. Great work. You have matched them all. The lower dB number indicates a quieter sound. High decibel levels can be painful and can cause permanent hearing loss. Have you ever seen a movie where sound is traveling through space? What is scientifically wrong with that movie scene? The truth is that sound cannot travel in space because sound can travel only through a medium. A medium is a solid, liquid, or gas. Because space has no air and is mostly empty, sound cannot travel through space. 
Click each of the images to learn more about how sound travels. So we talked about this yesterday, how if you were on the moon and you dropped a big rock, you wouldn't have any sound because there's no air in space for the sound to travel through. There's no atmosphere on the moon. Um, in my room here, you can't see it, but behind me, one wall, one short little wall is completely covered with Star Wars stuff because I love Star Wars. But if you watch a Star Wars movie and you see the pictures or the video of the spaceships in outer space and they go and they make the sound, it wouldn't happen. It would be silent because there's no air in outer space. So those spaceships wouldn't be making any sound at all. That's funny to think about. All right, let's look at these. Sound waves can travel through water just as they can travel through air. But because water molecules are more tightly packed together than air molecules, sound waves travel faster and farther through water than they do through air. Sound from a boat engine will travel through both water and air. However, the sound of the boat will travel faster and farther underwater than the sound travels through air. Sound is caused by vibrations. When a jet flies overhead, the vibrations of the engines cause the surrounding air to vibrate, transferring sound through the air. The vibrations are easily transferred through the air, but the sound energy spreads over a larger and larger area as it travels. If the jet is flying low, the engine will sound louder to you than if the jet is flying high. Have you ever seen someone putting their ear to a door to be able to hear what is happening in the next room? People do this because sound travels much faster and farther through solids, like the door, than it does the air. The vibration is transferred very quickly because particles in a solid are very close together. We use the properties of sound in many different ways. Click the images to learn some of the ways in which we use the properties of sound. Recording studios need to be soundproof so that the only sound recorded is the music. That's why the walls of a recording studio are covered with special soundproof insulation. This insulation is filled with air pockets to slow down and spread out the sound waves. Other special materials are used to muffle and lock sound from entering or leaving the studio. Musicians change the pitches and the lengths of musical notes. For example, a person playing a guitar will press down on a string before strumming it to form a specific note. When the string is pressed down closer to the bridge of the guitar, it shortens the string, causing the note to have a higher pitch. Guitar players change pitches by sliding their fingers up and down the strings. Ever wonder how sound effects artists make all those sound effects? Many sound effects artists use common items to make sounds that resemble certain activities. For example, sound artists crumple audio tape to mimic the sound of walking on grass. A coconut shell cut in half can mimic the sound of horse hooves. These sounds are recorded in a studio and then added to a film to make more vivid sounds. When recording music or sound effects for movies, sound engineers use a soundboard to change the sound properties. Engineers may lower the pitch of the notes or sound engineers may change the treble or higher notes to be quieter in a song. A soundboard allows an engineer to manipulate different sound qualities to draw attention to different parts of the music. Sound can travel through different mediums. Which of the following does sound travel through? Click all answers that apply. All right, we know it travels the fastest through a solid. That is correct. Sounds move fastest through a solid. Some solid soundproofing materials are designed with different layers to reduce the amount of sound traveling through them. Outer space doesn't have any air, so it has no matter that the sound can travel through, so it won't travel through that. It can travel through liquid. Good job. Sound vibrations move easily through a liquid. And it can travel through gas. That's right. We can hear each other when we speak because sound travels through the air. Great work. Sound can be transmitted only through a medium. That medium can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. The sound vibration moves from particle to particle, transmitting the sound through the medium. 
Which of the following images best shows how particles move in a sound wave? Click the correct image. Okay. Particles move from one side to the other? No, they don't do that. Particles move up and down? Yeah, I think so. Not quite. Oh. This is a transverse wave. Please try again. Oh, yeah. They want the compressed waves for sound, don't they? Great job. Particles are compressed and expanded in a sound wave. Good job. Sound waves are longitudinal waves caused by vibrations. Sound waves are carried by compressions and expansions of the particles of a medium. I missed one. Shame on me, Mr. Helton. Can you match the term to the correct spot on the diagram? Drag a word to the image. Okay. So I know the top, we've learned the top of that wave is called the crest. All right. Amplitude is how high it is. Which picture is showing how high it is? Hmm. Well, we'll come back to that one. I'm a little confused on that. Uh, wavelength is from one length to the other. Which picture is showing that? These are confusing pictures. I tell you what. I think maybe this is showing wavelength. Maybe. Okay. But this looks like it's pointing to the bottom of the wave, which is the trough. And the amplitude, how high the wave is or how low it is, is the energy. Good work. The crest is the high point of a wave. The trough is the low point of a wave. The amplitude is the height of the wave. And the wavelength is the measurement from crest to crest or compression to compression. You've learned a lot about sound and sound waves. Let's take a quick look at the points you covered. Pitch is the characteristic of sound that describes how high or low a sound is. The longer the string or tube in an instrument, the lower the pitch. The shorter the string or tube in an instrument, the higher the pitch. Volume is how loud or soft the sound is. Volume is measured in units called decibels. The lower the decibel number, the softer the sound. Loud noises or noises measuring 100 decibels or more can cause pain and can damage hearing. Loud noises can sometimes cause permanent ear damage. Special ear protection should be worn when you're around loud noises. Sound waves are compression waves, also known as longitudinal waves. Sound is transferred through vibrations that push particles closer together and then further apart as the wave moves. Sound waves need a medium to be transmitted. In other words, sound waves can travel only through a solid, liquid, or gas. Sound waves cannot travel through empty space. Now that you've finished this lesson, if you wish, you can go back and review any part of the lesson again. All right. Well, thanks for listening to this lesson on sound again. Um, and tomorrow we'll be doing a little Bill Nye video on sound. I think you'll enjoy that. Um, and then uh, no assignment for science today. And thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you later.